Welcome to a new episode of Medicine in 3 Minutes. As usual, we go straight to the point. The subject is bravely made clear and often illustrated. Let's start. Today's topic is about maxillary nerve. What is maxillary nerve? It is one of uh, the division of three geminal ganglion. It is sitting in the medial part of petrosal bone in the Meckel cave. Another view to illustrate the trigeminal ganglion. This is the anterior cranial fossa, the middle cranial fossa, and the posterior cranial fossa. Inside the middle cranial fossa, there is a temporal bone, and there is the petrous part of temporal bone that in which sit the uh, trigeminal ganglion with its three branches, the ophthalmic branches, the branch, the maxillary branch, and the mandibular branch. Another view to illustrate the middle cranial fossa with the trigeminal ganglion is its three branches, ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular. The ganglion is sitting in the, in the mecal cave. The trigeminal ganglion has sensory root going to the central nervous system. The motor root is connected with the, the is connected with the mandibular division. Sensory roots are connected with three nuclei. Mesencephalic nucleus, centropontine nucleus, and spinal trigeminal nucleus. Pain, touch, and temperature are connected with trigeminal spinal nucleus. Mesencephalic nucleus take fiber coming from proception of muscle, muscle of mastication. And the uh, centropontine nucleus take fiber coming from uh, for a fine touch of face and pedate. Uh, maxillary nerve take origin from the trigeminal ganglion and move forward in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus. Above it is the ophthalmic division. Then it will leave middle cranial fossa through the foramen rotundum. Communication between between middle cranial fossa and pterygopalatine fossa. Uh, here are some landmarks to remember. The three middle ganglion, three branches, ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular, and maxillary with the cavernous sinus, and then go to the foramen rotundum from rotum, Roman, ro, uh, foramen rotundum to the pterygopalatine fossa. Inside the sinus, it moves laterally. Here is the maxillary uh, branch, and this is the ophthalmic branch. Inside the cavernal sinus is the internal carotid artery with, uh, with the six uh, nerve. Laterally, there is the maxillary V2, abducens, which is six, and ophthalmic, here it is, then trochlear and, and ocular motor. Landmark for the trigeminal ganglion. Cavernous sinus, foramen rotundum, pterygopatatine fossa, inferior orbital fissure, infraorbital groove, infraorbital canal, and infraorbital foramen. Foramen rotundum is a communication between middle cranial fossa 
and Pterigo Palatin Fossa. Here is the Pterigo Palatin Fossa, and here is the Foramen Rotandum. Another illustration of uh, Foramen Rotandum and Pterigo Palatin Fossa. What is the Pterigo Palatin Fossa? It's a bony pyramid space in deep lateral aspect of the skull below the posterior and apex of the orbit and behind the upper and posterior medial part of the maxilla. Maxillary branch enter the pterygoid palatine fossa through the foramen rotendum. It penetrates the upper part of the pterygo palatine fossa to connect with a parasympathical uh, ganglion. Another illustration of pterygo pterygo palatine fossa and under the orbit and behind the maxilla. Here is the foramen rotundum and the ne maxillary nerve coming inside. Another illustration of pterygo palatine fossa under the orbit and between the uh, and behind the, the, the maxillary. Pterygo palatine fossa, there is a roof, there is a medial uh, wall, and there is a lateral wall, and there is an anterior and posterior wall, and inferior wall. Uh, the roof, there is inferior orbital fissure. In the lateral wall, there is pterygo maxillary fissure. In the posterior wall, there is the foramen rotundum, the, pterygo, the pterygoid canal, and uh, the, the inferior wall, there is palatovaginal canal. The sphenopalatine foramen is in the, the medial wall. And the greater palatine canal is in the inferior wall. Two fissures, inferior orbital fissure and pterygo maxillary fissure. Two, three canals, pterygoid canal, palatovaginal canal, and greater palatine canal. And two foramen, foramen rotundum and sphenopalatine foramen. The maxillary, the maxillary enter the infraorbital uh, fissure. When it enter an infraorbital fissure, it continue as infraorbital nerve. The continuation is infraorbital nerve. It starts from the groove, then it goes to the canal to reach the infraorbital foramen. It starts in, in infraorbital fissure and it ends in infraorbital foramen. The groove and uh, the canal of infraorbital uh, infraorbital canal within the pterygo palatine fossa the main trunk of maxillary nerve give another branch superiorly called zygomatic branch this zygomatic branch is entering in the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. Main continuation of the nerve is infraorbital nerve. This is the main continuation of the nerve.
Another branch called posterior superior alveol nail nerve. Posterior superior al uh, uh, alveolar nerve moving laterally and downward through pterygo maxillary fissure. It's going downward to maxillary, uh, th through maxillary sinus mucosa to supply the upper trimolar teeth. I repeat, the posterior superior alveolar nerve, the posterior superior alveolar nerve coming through pterygo maxillary fissure going through maxillary sinus mucosa to supply the three upper molar. The maxillary give another branch superiorly. This other branch is called zygomatic branch. And zygomatic branch is entering through the inferior orbital fissure. Inside the pterygo palatine fossa, maxillary give two branches. The zygomatic branch that go through the inferior orbital fissure and the posterior superior alveolar nerve that's going through pterygo maxillary fissure. These two branches of maxillary, one is going superiorly, the second one is going to the mucosa to supply uh, molar teeth. As it moves forward within the floor of the infraorbital groove, one branch is given to the middle superior alveoli nerve. This is the groove and this is the middle superior alveolar nerve. And uh, the middle superior alveolar nerve moving laterally in the lateral aspect of mass, ma, maxilla over the surface of mucosa to supply two premolar. Within the, the floor of infraorbital canal, another branch is given, and this other branch is the anterior superior alveolar nerve to supply to incisor. All the three branches are connected each other to constitute a network called superior alveolar plexus. From main branch of maxillary uh, nerve, there is a zygomatic branch coming from the infraorbital fissure, and the zygomatic branch, it gives two branches, the zygomatico-facial nerve and the zygomatico-temporal nerve. The zygomatico-facial nerve and in the zygomatico-facial foramen. And the zygomatico-temporal nerve, it gives communicant branch to lacrimal gland. What are direct branches of maxillary nerve? There are five uh, um, uh, branches of maxillary nerve. The first one is meningeal. This, the, the, the second one are ganglionic branches. The third one is zygomatic branches, infraorbital branch, and posterior superior alveolar branch. Five branches. Meningeal, ganglionic branch, zygomatic branch, infraorbital branch, 
en posterior superior alveolar branch. A typical ganglionic branch uh, have three, three components. A sensory somatic fiber for touch pain and temperature from the maxillary. Postganglionic parasympathetic and postsympathetic vasomotoris. Input, three input, touch pain and temperature, postganglionic parasympathetic and vasomotor sympathetic. This is the input for the ganglion. Parasympathetic fiber come in from the great petrosal nerve through the foramen lacerum are going to the ganglion to, to the pterygoid uh, uh, pterygopalatine ganglion. Sympathetic fiber, vasomotory sympathetic fiber coming from the deep petrosal nar nerve are coming to the foramen lacerum. Parasympathetic and sympathetic together, they constitute the nerve of pterygoid canal before they reach the ganglion. I repeat, parasympathetic coming from the great petrosal nerve and sympathetic coming from the deep prison, a deep, prison, deep petrosal nerve together in the foramen lacerum, they constitute the nerve of pterygoid canal to go to the pterygopalatine ganglion. From the pterygopalatine ganglion postsynaptic parasympathetic fiber, they go to the zygmatic branch to lacrimal gland. There is uh, a synapse here for the parasympathetic, there is a synapse in the ganglion. For the, the, the sympathetic, there is no synapse because, uh, here. Pterygopalatine fossa communicate with the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. It communicates with the, the, the nose through the sphenopalatine foramen. It communicates with the path from the great, greater palatine canal and uh, it communicates with the pharynx through the palato-vaginal canal. Posterior nasal branches are divided into lateral and medial branches to supply pain, touch and temperature uh, vasomotory fiber and parasympathetic fiber for the mucosa. One of the medial branches go to the septum anterior, downward and forward to incisive canal to come to the palate, to nasopalate, supplying most part of anterior palate and gum behind incisor. Branch going to the palate are palatine nerve, greater and lesser uh, uh, palatine nerve. They are moving from the greater palatine nerve to the nose through the posterior inferior nasal branch and move anteriorly to meet nasopalatine to supply the hard vasomotor and vasomotoris palate and temperature. All these nasal branches participate in the sneezing reflex. Sneezing reflex afferent from trigeminal maxillary nerve to sneezing center in the medulla and efferent are coming from vagus nerve to nasal lacrimal gland, to facial muscle, and for respiratory muscle. Let's recap. 
five branches of maxillary nerve meningeal one ganglionic branches zygomatic branch and posterior superior alveolar nerve this is the direct branches the zygomatic it gives zygotemporal nerve and zygomaticofacial nerve zygomaticotemporal nerve give communicant branch to lacrimal gland It gives also medial superior alveolar nerve and anterior superior alveolar nerve before it comes to infraorbital foramen. From the infraorbital foramen, it gives three branches, palpebral, nasal, and superior labial for the upper lip. Thank you for watching this episode of Medicine in 3 Minutes. Would you like to click the button like and subscribe? Your comments are very welcome. Thank you.